The Lockheed A-12 Reconnaissance Aircraft's experimental fighter interceptor version was the YF-12 Blackbird. On May 1, 1965, the YF-12 set a speed record of 2,070.101 miles per hour and an altitude record of 80,257.65 feet during Air Force flight tests. The YF-12 was first publicly displayed at Edwards Air Force Base in 1964, but it was never used by the military. However, it was a forerunner of the SR-71 Blackbird reconnaissance plane. Between 1969 and 1979, two YF-12s were flown in a joint Air Force-NASA research program at the NASA Flight Research Center. In 1971, an in-flight fire destroyed a third shared plane, primarily piloted by the Air Force. NASA researchers at all four of the agency's aeronautical centers were able to study the thermal, structural, and aerodynamic effects of sustained high-altitude Mach 3 flight using the YF-12. The YF-12, which was painted flat black, was made primarily of titanium alloy, allowing it to withstand skin temperatures of over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Work on the YF-12 began in secret in the late 1950s at the Lockheed Advanced Development Project's office in Burbank, California, also known as the Skunk Works. Flight data was kept secret for a long time after President Lyndon B. Johnson announced the plane's existence on February 29, 1964. Following the announcement, the plane was assigned the Air Force designation YF-12A. As just stated, the unofficial name for Lockheed's secret development facility in Burbank was Skunk Works. Despite producing a large amount of research data, the YF-12 program was canceled in the late 1970s when NASA's research priorities shifted from speed to efficiency. During its nine-year lifespan, the YF-12 research program completed 297 flights and 450 flight hours in a joint NASA Air Force program. There is only one YF-12 left in existence. It can be seen at the United States Air Force Museum at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The Development of the Blackbirds In 1959, Lockheed began work on the A-11, a long-range, high-altitude plane. It was a Cold War project. The project team was led by Clarence Kelly Johnson, Lockheed's Vice President for Advanced Development Projects. Johnson was previously in charge of the development of the U-2 spy plane. President Lyndon Johnson told reporters on February 29, 1964, five years after work on the A-11 began, that the aircraft, by then modified to the A-12 production version with a reduced radar cross-section, had achieved speeds of over 2,000 miles per hour and altitudes of over 70,000 feet in tests at Edwards Air Force Base. The Air Force YF-12 flight test program at Edwards lasted until 19 1966. The plane was piloted to the aforementioned record altitude and speed by Colonel Robert L. Stevens and Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Andre. On July 24, 1964, President Johnson announced that Lockheed was also developing a long-range advanced strategic reconnaissance plane for military use, capable of worldwide reconnaissance for military operations. The SR-71 was essentially a redesigned YF-12. Despite being heavier than the YF-12, the SR-71 spy plane could conduct strategic surveillance and had a longer range. The military never used the YF-12 spy plane. Due to a demand for the capabilities of its successor, the experimental YF-12s were essentially shelved until 1969 when two of them were deployed as research vehicles at the NASA Flight Research Center. In 1969, the Air Force provided NASA with two YF-12As as part of its research agreement. On June 24, 1971, one of the planes suffered an in-flight fuel line failure, resulting in a fire in the right engine. Air Force pilot Lieutenant Colonel Ronald Layton and Fire Control Officer Major Billy A. Curtis ejected after being unable to save the smoking aircraft, but the YF-12A was destroyed in a fiery explosion in the desert. A YF-12C plane took its place. The YF-12C differed from the YF-12A in that the A model had a round nose, whereas the C model had its chine carried forward to the airplane's nose. 
Other internal and external configuration differences existed, but the two aircraft shared common inlet designs, structural concepts, and subsystems. The YF-12C was, in fact, a then-secret SR-71A, serial number 64-17951, with NASA tail number 60-6937. The reason for this deception was that NASA, while flying the YF-12A interceptor version of the aircraft, was not permitted to possess the strategic reconnaissance version for a period of time. Time. The bogus tail number belonged to a Lockheed A-12, serial number 60-6937, but the A-12's existence was kept secret until 1982. The tail number 06937 was chosen to correspond with the tail numbers assigned to the three existing YF-12A aircraft 06934, 06935, and 06936. The History of NASA's YF-12 Project NASA and the Air Force announced their collaboration in a YF-12 research program on July 18, 1969. The Air Force's agenda was combat research, while NASA engineers initially focused on a study of flight loads and structural heating. Much of NASA's research focused on the feasibility and development of supersonic cruise aircraft. For the program, two YF-12As, tail numbers 935 and 936, were removed from Air Force storage. On December 11, 1969, 935 took its first flight as a NASA U.S. Air Force research plane, officially launching the program. The the fuel line failure described occurred on June 24, 1971, aboard 936. For the majority of the program's life, the YF-12s flew nearly every week unless they were grounded for maintenance or modification. The program's only crash was the fiery end of the 936 on the desert floor. But flight crews were forced to make emergency landings at least twice due to in-flight problems. The planes were also susceptible to an airflow issue involving the engine inlets known as an unstart, which caused a thrust imbalance and violent yawing. NASA was able to expand its research capabilities thanks to the YF-12's ability to maintain a cruise speed greater than Mach 3. A significant amount of flight research was conducted in aerodynamics, propulsion, controls, structures, subsystems, and other areas such as upper atmosphere physics, noise tests and measurements, and handling qualities. A series of wind tunnel tests, laboratory experiments, and analyses were used to supplement the YF-12 flight research data. As a result, the combined ground flight research yielded massive amounts of data that were later used to design other supersonic aircraft. Over 125 technical reports were produced as a result of the program. Propulsion studies, investigations of a flight path oscillation known as fugoid, studies of the plane's loads and handling capabilities, and performance tests involving flights with a ventral fin removed were all part of the YF-12 flight tests. Other research included studies of jet wake dispersion, engine stalls, elevation hold at high mock speeds, boundary layer noise, and the effect of a boat tail design on drag. The program was ordered to be terminated in 1977, but NASA used leftover funds to keep the project running until 1979. Plane 935 flew its final NASA mission on October 31, 1979. On November 7, 1979, an Air Force crew transported it to the Air Force Museum at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The Cold Wall Experiment because air friction heated the plane during flight, the YF-12 was also used to study high-temperature phenomena unrelated to the plane. The cold wall experiment, which involved exposing a cooled cylinder to the friction and heat of a Mach 3 environment, was perhaps the most significant of these studies. The hollow, sensor-equipped cylinder, which was mounted beneath the aircraft, was cooled with liquid nitrogen and insulated from the heat generated during flight. A primer cord was used to blow the insulation from the frigid cylinder as the plane approached Mach 3. Temperature, pressure, and friction readings from the flying cylinder were compared to data from theoretical analyses and wind tunnel simulation. The findings were a significant breakthrough in fluid dynamics research. As we can see from the deadly characteristics of the YF-12, it's not surprising to know its reputation for terror. That's all for today, guys. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and also press the bell icon for any new updates. See you in the next one!